matters, and that it'll get struck down. State action solves minimalist pressures in federal courts. It means we are a better judicial solution. Green in 13, everyone in the 50 state constitution, blah, blah, just states to establish education, great many who encourage education to equality. This is for the Supreme Court recognizing that the federal law nationalizing of potentially expensive state of social rights across state diversification would have a sort of strong minimalist pressure to assess rhetoric for imagined resources, direct to redemption sphere of federal litigation, and to put in increasing the interest in the argument of conservative federal funds to flush out the rights in progressive ways that local institutions might be more receptive to rights claims as a feature, not above. They say funding, housing differences doesn't make sense because the counterplace language ends the focus on property taxes. I did that above. Also, we're progressive state financing. That solves other dishads of anger. In 12, the states scrutinize a progressive funding system to blend progressive funding formulas and approach that use resource ways that will most effectively leave the playing fields between the districts disparities. Being seriously undermined, the public schools eliminating these must be a priority. They say patchwork. They've conceded that intrastate is solved, meaning all of Alabama is fine or all of California is fine, so everything is massively better. Also, we are able to lead to uniformity. States cause experimentation regarding intent when subnational units on face high common problems that may be motivated to common policy responses. So national competition creates political pressure for states to ensure well educated labor will motivate policymakers to consider similar education policies, policy learning, encourages national policy ideas floating around borders that to each other's actions choose judicial policy according to logical rather than partisanship. These subnational governments face incentives to cooperate with ways still duplicate with efforts to use resources efficiently by working together. The I law solvency deficit there internal link evidence is all about the signal of right to education. We solve that Glennon in 16 myth we can really distinguish between domestic court versus friction cease to become useless as a category sink control policy too often we draw artificial streets between state and federal local law even though the law frequently overlaps with one voice pronouncements have only flows its connection with modern state governments categorical pronouncements you know the real life conduct of state governments so common to the foreign affairs initiatives are frequent broad and extensive states have a taking stance on my right of foreign policy questions more accurate interpretation would be that we are witnessing institutional gravity in action they say it's not a treaty spirit of the law outweighs no one to us they say perception this is an example of what links them because if they don't trust the states they surely won't trust the federal government states theory we get it if one we don't fiat uniformity and two have a solvency advocate are warmly and broad evidence meet that standard we're good education federalism and states rights is the key question textual evidence in the one and see negative flexibility we have to test them from multiple angles all policymakers do c is after ground they get tons of disads they just chose not to read them d is negative ground and topic explosion more key functional limit against small new affirmatives our defense is usually air negative they have structural damages like first and last and the fact that uh the topic is huge and win percentages are skewed after blip checks it and reject the argument it didn't impact the overall strategy they say reciprocity debate is unfair live with it they say it's illogical the judge is a, an analyst not a policy Maker. Also, their standard kills negative ground because it justifies intrinsicness. Uh, reject the argument, not the team. They say, uh, just read it one state counter plan. That gets wrecked because of conservatism in the states they listed. The follow on arguments were mostly above. They say politics links. That's wrong. We read losers lose, not popularity. They say Trump, if he fights it, it takes out F solvency because of circumvention. They say solvency ever since we just beat those. Uh, spending. I'm not going to receive the terminal impact defense that takes out the link turns if I'm wrong. The counterplan links to the dissent, so that solves the link turns as well. I will expressly concede the economy is resilient and that deficit spending is sky high, which means if the state's deficit spend or if the state's increased taxes a ton, it doesn't matter because resiliency ensures that there's not the inequality they're talking about. The ban counterplan, I'm not going for it. 50 permanent test competition, conditionality is good. We get to their interpretation as conduit disguise. We're key to flexibility, you test from the left and right, that's key to education. We're also key to strategic thinking, we teach cost benefit analysis. Third is logical policy. The status quo. Our defense is permanent to our conversation. Check every argument is conditional and reciprocity matters because they get permutations. Not about an issue. Stick us with it. Reasonability is best because it prevents substantive crowds. They say skew, it's inevitable, and uh, no argument irresponsibly in this debate. I will. I'm not going for many arguments because I think the counterplan solves. First, extend the system fails. No one listens to ILR. Our cynic evidence says there's been 182 wars since 1945, including 32 right now. It says the U.S. breaches tons of treaties that there's inaction on common issues like climate change. Both is a no internal link argument because norms are inevitably destroyed and no impact because the system doesn't check anything. Extend uh, to one and three. The alt causes education is not key internationally. There's torture, detention, and drone strikes. They say peacetime matters. Then you have no answer to things like death penalty or over incarceration. Destroying rights now. Moral causes human rights. Washington 17, many U.S. laws practices, particularly criminal justice, immigration, national security, violate international recognized human rights. They use least able to defend their rights are most likely to suffer abuses. Trump kept a campaign marked by misogynistic, xenophobic, racist rhetoric and policies that would harm vulnerable black communities, contributing toward human rights obligations. Both Trump proposals included deporting millions, changing U.S. laws allow torture and loading up the Guantanamo Bay facility. Extend our impact defense. Democratic peace theory is fine. There's no authoritarian backslide impact. Our literacy evidence is empirically designed that other actors are able to solve for it. The knowing uh, terminal impact still applies. Other page. I'm only going for one argument. Money is not key. Their measures for student achievement are bad. They said graduation. I already said in cross why there are confounding variables. Second, they said test scores. Hannah Sheck is only good on test scores, which means if your metric is test scores, then working. Here's evidence from that Robinson in 16 showering with money has been a cost of thirst. World War II inflation adjustment spending for student has increased 663 3%. Schools experienced a 96% increase in student population. Schools have increased their staff by four times increase in students. The staffing surge has been tremendously expensive, yet has not led to achievement. National math scores have been flat and reading scores declined. Uh, market reading scores declined. Uh, uh, one second, friend.
That one minute for the very thing. I just have so many thoughts about snakes. All right, what can I answer? Nothing. Okay. Um, so the reason that the states that have changed how education is funded change from pop, pop, change to property tax determines where no, 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 your you money backwards. goes. Backwards. Please do not mansplain. Um, the reason that states changed to property tax shapes education is because a bunch of rich parents were pissed off that they were paying all this money for education and their kids still weren't learning enough because, you know, there's not enough money in the states. How does the counter plan overcome this? So, a couple different arguments. Would you like me to start with how we solve funding? Or I understand you reallocate funding from that. Yeah. I would like you to say how there is enough funding to reallocate. Yeah, so uh, we read evidence that says they would adopt progressive financing structures, i.e. higher taxes on the wealthy. Now I understand, investment crowd out, private sector, et cetera, et cetera. Those no. arguments make less sense because you have said in the 2AC that the debt is high and that the economy is resilient. So if we fund by taxes, great. If we fund what by taxes, taxes spending, what great. is the tax rate? You have said that it's good to debate state versus federal action, and you have not specified how the freak the state are going to pay for this, yeah. which is the core question. Yeah, yeah. So what is the tax rate? No, I am, How are they getting this done? I, I understand. I am not a budget analyst. I would like you to just answer This please. is the percent. It's sort of not possible. Here's the response to it. By changing you the constitution. Okay. So for I'm example, I'm Illinois answer. currently has no budget okay. because Illinois cannot yep. afford to pass one and they are so <laughs> over budget and are considering limiting school days to four days a week because of how jacked their budget is. I, I understand. How does the plan overcome the fact that states also have to cover Medicaid spending because the ACA is about to reveal and a litany of other well, issues? The ACA is not going to get revealed, as was sort of proven like a week ago. But that being put to the side, the thing I was going to say before you and Obuli simultaneously cut me and each other off um, was the fact that uh, the first plank of the counter plan that puts right to education in the Constitution means that the governors and legislators have to fight, figure it out. It is a mandated constitutional And what obligation. happens if they can't agree on a bill? Your counter plan relies on the states to pass independent other bills to pay for the counter plan. What evidence have you read that says that they will come to an agreement on how to pay for it? So, two things to step back. One, Fed follow on. Two, no, no, Fed is irrelevant right now because can, the states have to be successful yeah, before I, follow I understand. On. So, try again. Okay, well, so another framing thing before I get there, real quick. Just we have read evidence that says the way the app is implemented on a fund no, that is, irrelevant. is by the states. So if, if I look like a clown in cross right but now, are, but this is a solvency deficit. But how is the implementation relevant to who pays? My yeah. only question is how do you pay? Marge, I've said, this, I've said this like three times. I know, and you can never forced. answer it. It is a progressive financing structure that is some mix of taxes, offsets, and deficit spending. One okay, if the plan is a loss for Trump, why would he follow on? Uh, he doesn't have to. The department you said the federal government would follow on. That's your main your answer. F, your F is done by the Supreme Court, which and Trump Congress. is thankfully not a member of. Trump oh. is also not a member of Congress. The idea yeah, that our plan thankfully. is only done by the court shows how little this counterplan solves.
diseases turn inequality, raises medical costs, and decreases effective wages and causes medical hoarding. Disease also turns by law and hedge at course of states to turn internally deal with pandemics and departize international norms and protections over medical goods, breaks the UN, WTO, and WHO. And every developing country infrastructure peace to be peace commissions are scrambled. Disease turns democracy, rampant disease destroy, uh, results in authoritarian interventions, destroys voting base, the discourse hurts minorities, especially in the non US countries. Economic growth solves their internal links. 10 or 15 economic growth is have lifted billions out of have lifted, have lifted billions of people out of poverty. Economic growth is a benefit of the world, for world like and enormously more minor, women minorities and the poor in part are better off because of a, uh, because of a wealthier nation. The, uh, the nonsensical argument I'll answer it later. The tax reform middle pass now first. The midterm is pressure. The legislative victory is necessary to maintain control of the Congress. The tax reform is necessary to the populist decisions. They're arguing about health care just as real as with financing, which is a true duty. Except for the, there's a contingency plan to pay for tax reform, even if they overhaul the Obamacare's unsuccessful. Well, you can still do tax reform regardless of health care attitude. I'll be that it will pass right in comparative statements. Proof lawyer 720 Republicans are more unified on tax reform. For the health care, we are much more unified on tax reform. I feel more and more confident of anything the tax reform is going to get done. The PC or not real debate. The preferred issues between uniqueness, even if the little capital isn't really abstract, it works in the context of tax reform. PC's finite and real best size when ICT presence. Use our time with different hashtags. Good full selection for gender presence. You can use our time and effort to secure past to policy proposals. The two be successful presence have to have to have time the proposal will allow the fair rule. Condition the first year's distinct piece of congressional openness. O'Neill, 16, when there is a little pent up, there's a pent up demand for national election. Actually, the Gulf between President Trump and Elizabeth Bernie, which is my success for sure. Because new presence is a new agenda, it's been a little bit of 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 a
little plays because he runs in tutorials about studies. His analysis are designed to achieve little attention results, and he does by uh, he does this by making subjective one sided decisions about what to include. This uh, it's a journey for someone who pretends uh, uh, pretends to pretend to be an academic and gets and gets paid uh, and, he, and he gets paid by parties with direct financial stake in, in, outcome, in his outcomes. Uh, this problem is only one in a tape recording conversation in which Baker said he would uh, he would play with the data in exchange for a substantial research grant, taking a sweeping conclusion with a heaping of salt. Hannah Shack is a legend. <laughs> but he's a legend, actually. Baker also wears sandals. <laughs> so do you, Tyler. Yeah. <laughs> no, 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 no. Shoo me! Oh, wow, you haven't seen Rocket Power. All right. Let's, let's talk about the counterplan some more um, and maybe the funding mechanism. So, uh, one thing that's different about this counterplan than um, I believe any of the counterplans that I've heard so far at the camp is that they're very specific about the way that their counterplan actually works. So the kind of United States federal government, or the, the, the 50 United States relevant territories will somehow provide a right to education. In this instance, they have a very specific right to education that the state Supreme Court um, would each do, or I guess it could be done by constitutional amendment. Um, but either way, it just means that every individual state says, that the state has a right to education. Then, the only, and again, the theme of the funding seems to be our key thing. Can anyone describe the difference between, well, how is, how are they, how would the states normally fund this, how do they fund their schools right now? Property taxes. How does the counterplay change that? Well, it could theoretically raise taxes. What else does it do? How do they move? Okay, so they could also reallocate funding if, for example, whatever other budgets that Alabama might have, they could take that money and, like, you know, their, their park services, and the states provide other things, so there is some money. There's obviously the question of how much more money are in those budgets. California, huge budget, probably can handle it. Some of these other states is a question yet to be determined, but the more fundamental one is the progressive tax reform. What's that? It's one you're missing. So far, I think you just repeated the two that they said. What's it? Yeah, it takes money out of rich districts and puts it into lesser, like districts with not as much money. So, for example, in Dallas. In our lab, at least, we make a lot of fun of Highland Park because that's the rich neighborhood where the school, the public school is really, really good in Highland Park. There's some other good schools in the area, but they're way out in the suburbs, white flight style. But Highland Park is close to downtown, but guess who can't afford to live there? Darby, that's right. My daughter, my lab knows Darby can't afford to live there because her dad's a poor teacher, so we cannot move into Highland Park so Darby can go to a good, a good public school. Um, and so, and people less privileged than the Mahoney family also cannot afford to live there. In fact, people significantly more privileged than the Mahoney, Mahoney family can't afford to live there. Kind of the rich of the rich in Dallas live in Highland Park. Since current funding is mostly property taxes, rates to be determined as noted in cross-examination, none of us are budget analysts and don't have the... And also the other thing about that is each state is different and even within certain states there are higher property taxes in some areas for schools. Anybody know why? Because they want to have good schools. So there's another neighborhood close to where I live called Castle Hills and it's not the rich of the rich but it's more rich than the Mahoney family, and to live there when you buy property, you agree to buy to pay higher property taxes. So right now, if houses in my neighborhood cost $150,000 on average, and we pay the same percentage as Highland Park, and Highland Park houses start at $1.5 million, the schools are going to have 10 times as much money as the schools in my area. Then, on top of that, I don't know about Highland Park for sure, but it wouldn't shock me a bit if they have an additional little bit of icing that they throw on there. It's like when you buy property in Highland Park, you agree to pay even more money. All right, that's the status quo. The counter plan claims to solve that by taking all the Highland Park money and putting it in one big pool in the state. And then once they do that, all of that money can come back in equal proportions 
this hasn't been clarified in this debate, but one of my guesses would be per student. Not exactly like backpack funding that some of you have been talking about, but a similar notion, like how many students go to your school, this is how much money the state of Texas has, all of that money then gets filtered back down to the individual schools. Does that make sense? Anybody have any other questions about the yet? Yeah, so, okay, so that's a good question. It's one of the questions that has to be debated out. Is Highland Park so rich that they could fund all of the Dallas public schools? I don't know. Like, and what about, what about cities, like smaller cities that maybe don't have a Highland Park? That's a, that is a good question, but that's to be debated out. But at least, theoretically, you would think that Highland Park's school that probably is reasonably 10 times better than the school that my daughter will go to, if that money gets redistributed back to other schools, I don't know, sufficiency framing, necessity, I don't know, that's, that's to be debated out, those questions. All right, what about the politics disadvantage? So one of the things I thought was good that, that you all could adopt when you're debating politics, most of the time, it kind of depends on this debate, maybe they have a little bit more specific leak evidence, but I like how Tay just stopped and he explained the firestorm that, the firestorm that would happen because of the plan. So they've kind of shifted tack a little bit, so it starts out, it's just like, it's a loss, Trump fights for it, but if, he, if it's a loss for him, then he'll never get this thing done. And the thing I really like is, all of a sudden it sounds like they have specific link out of it. Like you, I'm not looking at the speech documents, I'm just flowing, so I don't know if the link evidence supports this, but I do know it sounded really good to me. It sounded like, oh yeah, here's three or four things that are going to make sense as far as causing just a huge amount of problems in the Congress if this plan passes. It's at, the process of getting through Congress is going to make a lot of people mad. Any, what are some of those things? Yeah? Like, or did it happen in the No, not exactly. Anybody else? Yes? What's that? Oh, yeah. The boss enforcing the plan. This is a great argument. It's just like, how does it look? If Trump fought against it, and AFBIOT requires that the Department of Education actually enforce that the plan happens. So the individual person that Trump handpicked, and remember, you gotta sign a little loyalty oath or something. Who knows what, I mean, and her loyalty oath could very well have been signed with, you know, a million, two million, five trillion. I don't know how much she wanted to be the Department of Education, but that deal, that loyalty oath that she had to sign to Trump, and now all of a sudden she's enforcing something that he actively fought against. That's a perfect example of. Does he? Does he have a card on this? I doubt it, because no one in their right mind thinks this is going to happen. But does it make sense? And has he taken his kind of whatever generic leak they've read before and established? Hey, what about this? I feel like that that makes a lot of sense. Am I, am I slowing you all back here? I, I just will talk until you're ready. You go ahead. You good? Okay. Um, let's see what else. I'm... Oh, anybody else have any of those other politics arguments? All right, where are we going to go with this uh, this debate about Baker and Hanshaw? What's happening here? What? Sam, you got something to say? What is it? Hanshaw. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> No actual substantive comment, it merely a clarification of my grammar and pronunciation. The, my pronunciation problems, you've seen the least of them if you were in my lab and I was trying to pronounce your name. Is that a comment? Yeah, but... yeah, both sides are definitely claiming that each side is evidence is from a hack. And yes? Oh, if they're hacks, they better write good cards. Like, okay, the least we can expect from our hack is at least they're making a very compelling argument, and it's not uncommon in debate. The more ridiculous the evidence is, the more likely, ridiculously good, the more likely it is that they're a hack. But are we going to get beyond that? What are, where are we going with any warrants for, like, this is what our actual warrant is besides your author is not good? Yeah. 
Oh, Richard, you showed up. Did you bring your three cronies with you? Oh, good. Push up, push up. <laughs> Somebody was winner. Oh, the same marks get to reply. All right, sorry, go ahead. about which metrics are being used, which metrics are the most valuable, which, and then, and that's, that is from a judge's perspective, I guess in this instance you all are judges, but at least from my perspective as a judge, I would much rather hear the arguments about this particular warrant, this is what studies Baker did, these are what studies Hanchuk did. Now, obviously there's a question of if money's changing hands, maybe that affects what's being said, but maybe we need, I need a little bit more on that, and I'd certainly much rather hear about these are the actual studies that they've done or the studies that they've analyzed to draw these conclusions. Those arguments seem to be a lot better. I feel like I'm holding up Julie up here, so I'm going to get up. Okay, go ahead. Okay, so the next thing on my list was DA turns the case. So in most of the debates that I've seen so far, too much of the DA turns the case is if there's a nuclear war, poor people will also die. I agree. Poor people will also die. And I'll also say that's better than not saying DA turns the case. At least at least we're trying. Okay? And I like that. But and, and I've tried to emphasize this with the people that I've been judging, which is, you know, debate would probably be better if we didn't always think everything had to end in extinction. There is something bad that happens prior to extinction when the economy goes down or when innovation doesn't happen. And there's, there's a lot of that in this overview about when we don't have effective pharmaceutical industries, effective in innovation, there's lots of other bad things that can happen prior to extinction. Okay? And thinking about how your DAs can access, especially parts of the affirmative, not as much in this debate because it's less about the deontology component of income inequality, but especially in those debates, thinking about the way the spending disadvantage or innovation affects the poor disproportionately long before we get to the war scenario, I think that's a useful mechanism to use, and there was a fair amount of that in this OTA overview. All right, I'll give you the floor is yours, sir. All right, y'all. It's going to be the econ this ad, the inequality. I'm not the inequality advantage, the I law advantage, the state's counter plan, politics. Yeah, of course. But everybody. I'm going to give the order one more time. Hush, hush. All right. It's the econ disab, the inequality advantage, the I-law advantage, the state's counter plan, and then politics. Is everybody good? Take your time. This is about to be a Tony. Is everybody ready? Awesome. Tyler is functionally illiterate if he thinks any of the arguments on this page take out affirmative sovereignty. The federal government can definitely suspend. The majority of states cannot do more work here next time. The inequality advantage. The first thing is all about evidence is not written by Baker, but you only have cards from Hennishuk, who is paid by uh, charter schools in the first place. You should still prefer Baker anyway with the Spielberg 15. Baker does, not have, does, does have strong opinions, but he should spirit Baker for control. He sees what other research and research and never relies on from, from, from Hennishuk for members of the right wing Hoover Institute. And this is typically my older and a clear outlier. The rest of this advantage here, 25% of uh, that actually proves that CEO, that CEO, CEO, but it's also money does matter because some people literally cannot afford books or actually upkeep with a school or afford to pay teachers, which is the reason why you've lost this advantage. You've also conceded a 
terminal impact, which is warming, as well as hegemony, which will outweigh all of your distance because we have defense, and you do not have the international law well, that entire job to terminal impact here as well, which probably means that we should be able to win the outweighs 100 percent of case. The system works now because of the stable of the status quo. None of the two MC assumes a switch to authoritarianism, which I'll yell with evidence from this year says that Russia and China are currently pushing the international realm. None of this accounts for the comparative argument about the United States between China and Russia. This takes out all his all cause arguments because even though we do torture and the death penalty, so does China and Russia, so they're not a comparative better option than the United States for other people to model and follow on for. He's also dropped the distinction between peacetime and wartime norms, which honestly answers the rest of this debate. He's mishandled democratic backsliding transition wars. Or he, he only has game where democracies do not go to war with each other, which is a completely separate argument, which is a completely different scenario that he's dropped, which also is a distinction scenario. The uh, state's counterpart. Permutation debate crosses his appearance in counterbalance to politics because literally in either bankrupts all 50 states and have them pass constitutional amendments that are explicitly illegal and get challenged in courts after Trump told them to take control of education. Or the perm shows the leak because apparently the states are just bulletproof. The solvency debate solves none of the app. A is rollback. Supreme Court precedent, which he does not have any good evidence for. Uh, we only have, we have the only card on this, which is the bank's card. No enforcement because it can't overturn Rodriguez, which means people can do whatever they want and if you sue them, and even though you would win the case in the courts, they would appeal, they would go to the federal court, and you would get waxed, Tyler, just like this 1 AR. That is the same thing we have no money. Half of them are nearly bankrupt. Illinois cannot pass a budget this year, and the plan costs billions of dollars. Do not trust anybody who cannot show you the money first. Tyler says they would do a bunch of stuff, but cannot tell you what that looks like. If they take money from richer districts, he just makes all the schools shittier, and no one has good education, which means you solve zero percent of the 1 AC. Also, the judge discrimination is said, which is taxes bad, which is also the Oh, which evidence is perception. State courts do not get perceived or model internationally because no one gives a shit. Even if they do, the card that we have, which is the base evidence, which is specific to education, Taylor has not one card on this, says that only the Supreme Court can be cited in international law, which means he has no game on that affair. That's his treaties. Actually, I don't mean that solvency deficit. Your counterpoint is terrible. Tyler not feel like uniformity is game over. It means poor states like Alabama have shit education, and good states like New York have great education, which is obviously bad, which is the Robinson evidence from the 1AC. Uh, state backlash is not true because they don't have to spend any money. Also, none of our, uh, uh, none of our attorneys are about state backlash. There's no reason why they implicate any of our solvency arguments. The follow on Follow-up can never happen. A, all your positive links are proof that it can never happen. B, Trump would never allow follow-up. He wants to reduce federal involvement. If you were right about that, it, it's game over. C, it can never happen. The Supreme Court would have to strike down the counter plan because instead of adopting it because it specifically violates the precedent of the status quo. Also, every party's right on follow-up. It's about how follow-up happens for conservative policies, not liberal policies, which means he has no specific evidence on how the affirmative would get follow-up. You should frame this debate to the lesson specificity because all the times cards are terrible and he cannot read for comprehension. Uh, yeah, losers would also lose because Trump told the states to take control and then they just shit the bed. Politics? The politics debate. Inequality is not as certain disease is because, we, because that means that people are more likely to get diseases, but we resolve that by making people have better access to things like money and education, healthcare, etc., which is what our evidence is about. And when they see did not turn Iowa or hegemony, it's actually the other way around because the only way to solve for global diseases is through cooperation, which only the United States can foster by being the hegemon and having strong international law norms, which you have no game on. They say growth is a key internal link. The CFR evidence says we have the only internal to growth that matters in this debate. Your tax reform stuff is just a drop in the bucket. Oh, there's no time frame for diseases in the status quo. That's a drop argument in the uh, 1 AR. There's no reason why diseases would happen now. They have no evidence for what diseases happen. That can take 10 years, which is the argument that's also dropped. So the unique evidence proves the link turn argument that we have. Okay. I still have a minute. High school did. Did you set the timer? If you only go for another, I thought I said it. I was worried about this. It's over. Your timer was right. My timer was right? Yeah. Okay. We're good. So you guys have a minute? I have 58 seconds, is what I have. Oh, no, you said it for six. Yeah, you said it for six. I did? Just used to give them which times in six minutes. Oh, you can. You can have an extra minute for the two and we call this game. Sure, I'll, I won't say anything. I'll give you an extra minute. Go ahead, go ahead. 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 Go 
Go ahead, go ahead. We will give you a six and a half minutes. Go ahead, go ahead. Oh, I like it. Take that deal, Tyler. Take the deal. All right, we'll take the deal. Yeah. Take the deal. Yeah. Take the deal. Yeah. Let's go. Yeah. All right, Akbula, you got one minute. I've no. sanctioned your deal. Make it happen. No. You need to have this proof of the link turn. They don't have any reason why any win is going to be a win for a Trump. Also, Trump and PC are truly failed. They dropped all the numbers. Healthcare reported while Trump banned one, Trump banned two. Either A, this regime is over with the link, or B, this proof the link is ever 21st. But Trump is a flip flopper, which means anyone will be better than nothing. And they don't have any game on that. We have simply time to not passing the status quo. I think our culture is just better on this, and your culture is not assumed. The way that Trump is not being able to convince anybody with his PC in the first place. Also, uh, I think the link requires Trump to fight the plan. They have no reason why he would fight the plan. He probably just tweet about it because that's what Trump does. Also, no one being in 9-0, which means Gorgeous, does not have to vote for the plan for them against. Also, Trump base is resilient, which means they would always vote for him, but he can only appease Democrats. Right on, the 23. Trump is having on down hardcore, hard to support our body by a damn thing. The, the, the show goes off the day for DC and Pastor Brady. this against the people left upset when Billy Bush's stories came and went very quickly. Also, tax reform definitely will not pass. Uh, Ego 718, tax reform is unlikely. Republicans will likely work with the same narrow margin as Democrats or as much as to support the legislation. Okay, this is this is the perfect time. Uh, actually, there's one other thing I want to talk about before I talk about it. This is the perfect time to talk about, um, which is answer the overview. One AR is out there. If you've not already had this drilled into your head, answer the overview. That's where Agbuli started when he got to the VA. It's so important. It makes the two in R so easy when the two in R gets to stand up and say they've conceded VA outweighs. Even if you haven't conceded it, most of the way the judges flow is they've got a big block of text at the top of their flow. And so when the 1AR starts, 2AC1 extended, not unique, it won't pass now. And the judge is thinking, look at all of this ink I have at the top of my flow that the 1AR has not responded to. Even if eventually they get to it, they make impact calculus arguments while extending impact defense against the DA, just perceptually, when the 2NR gets to stand up and just say, extend, the DA outweighs the case, this argument. Extend, the DA turns the case, the Z key to international law, the Z is key to solving inequality. And it's just like a block of red ink with a bunch of arrows into the 2NR column. Perceptually, that's bad news. So when you're the 1AR, you want to answer those arguments. Okay, so now the, the, the perfect part that segued into this. Debate is hard. Debate is hard. There's like a thousand little things that you need to do to be, go from being a mediocre debater to being a really, really good debater. Every once in a while I've dabbled, like I'll debate against my debaters, they'll have tournaments that they let coaches go to, and I'll do it. And one of the reasons I really like to do it, even like I did a demo debate at GDS, and I enjoyed it because it reminds me that debate is hard. And that it makes me have a lot more sympathy for my students who, make, who do things that I've told them a hundred times not to do because I do them. How many times have I told my debaters, each of you should have a timer. You should time your partner. Can we do that? No. no. And you know why? Because debate is hard. And there's a thousand little things that you have to remember. And your coach is going to yell at you if you don't bring a stand, and if you don't bring 8.5 by 14 flow paper, and you don't clean your computer desktop off, and you don't set up a different profile to debate on, and that you G-chat during the 2 in R instead of helping your partner. But you know what? Debate is hard. And so doing all those little things, like when your coach is yelling at you, every once in a while, unless you go to St. Mark's, you can think about, oh yeah, I'd like to see you debate once, and see if you remember to do all of those things like you're telling me to do. On the other hand, when your coach is telling you those things, they're probably right. Like, yes, we should both have timers. Yes, we should have a speaking stand. Yes, we should have pens and flow paper. Those are little things that you can control. You can control having a different profile on your computer so that you don't get G-chatted a hundred times during the debate when everybody else's debate's over, but yours takes 15 minutes longer because your judge has to smoke between every speech or whatever. Those are things that you can control. Dr. Galloway, who helps in our lab, debated during a time where they used paper still. And he said the thing that he would focus on first if he debated now is making sure he was better at technology than everyone else. Because you can control that, and you can control that with the 
so-called infinite prep that the affirmative has. Well, affirmative or negative, you have that infinite prep to make sure that your technology works and that you're better at it than everybody else. That you know how to move documents using the tilde, or move, move parts of your speech document using the tilde key. And the hundred things that are a part of the thousand that are, if you're better at tech, you're better than they are. If you have a mouse with 12 buttons, you can cut cards faster than anybody else in the country or whatever. All of those kinds of things you can control. But this is just a little bit of, you know, debate's hard. And like, don't feel bad when some of these things don't go right. But if you control them, I mean, you should feel a little bit bad about that. I mean, they, you know, it is just a demo debate. Like I said, it's not in the top 10,000 debate experience that they've had. But I feel bad that I forgot my timer. A mistake we can control. Uh, let's see what else I want to talk about. Tyler, am I holding you up? Uh, I do whatever, but you should whatever. Um, Good. I, got, I can talk after you a bit. Okay. How much? How much? Six and a half. For real? Six and a half. Oh, oh, cut the deal. Seem fair to me. Yeah, so I think it's what we call judge penalty for not bringing timers. Well, yeah, they can drop the terminal <laughs> next to the app. So like all the time we want. Okay. I, also, I think March is up to it. That's another thing. I wanted you to answer so far. <laughs> it's, it's just evening the table. It's like in golf. You know, you, yeah, get a, you play with yeah. handicaps, we're, we're giving Tyler like extra 30. Like, like, look how, look how well she turned that around. Gone from me. I forgot to time my partner speech to undefeated against Tyler. All right. I mean, what's your All right. Uh, it's going to be politics, the state's power plan. I law advantage and then
Dewey evidence, which says that the funding arguments are wrong because they funded other places to save money and put elsewhere. They say PC not real was three words. They can see the Madonna evidence says aggregate studies, which they are saying are best for the Hanischek versus Baker comparison, so they can't get out of it. They've also conceded the O'Neill evidence, which says even if generally PC is irrelevant, the first year of the presidency sets the tone for the rest of Congress and shapes all the other questions. The thumper debate there is not one. They have no specific thumper besides a list of jokes about the travel men, which might be interesting, but are not things that Trump has fought against. Two conceded framing questions. One is issue specific uniqueness. We have won the debate that tax reform will pass now, which assumes things like thumpers and assumes other problems that exist, but says that PC has to say hi. The only thing that pushes it over the rail is if Trump fights the plan and causes backlash. They've also conceded our Iglesias evidence, which says the only people that matter are Senate Republicans, and that, that as long as Trump stays on messaging and focus on uh, conservative things, that it will be okay. There's no Russian thumper. Our Biden evidence says it'll be pushed to committee. There's no health care thumper. Our Cook evidence says that Trump is no longer pushing it. The impact of it was mostly in the overview, but remember, even if they win, no extinction, or even if they win some defense as a policymaker, you should care about thousands of people dying because there's such a small solvency deficit in the state's counter plan. The link to it, they've conceded the warrants and analysis about how uh, the plan is fought against by Trump, but fiat means that it gets pushed, it causes massive infighting and distractions, previous fights, and the fact that the Trump base's resilience is irrelevant because it still causes the sort of backlash that hurts them. They, their last three arguments in the last 30 seconds were all about the base to say, we didn't read that, I have no idea what the connection to it is, but even if the base is resilient, it still causes backlash. States! The permutation leads to the benefit uh, because it includes spiteful action. It does not lead to politics. They've also conceded that it's on a sliding scale, so if it links, it links less, and you should still vote negative. If we lose the permutation or at least that benefit debate, kick the counter plan for us because they've conceded uh, conditionality, best policy option, and reasons why we should be able to do it in the first place. It doesn't link because it doesn't include federal action. They say follow on links. That's long term down the road after tax reform has already been passed. They say no backlash because it will eventually become popular. That is true of the plan in the immediate because they are initially pushed together all at once, but not the counter plan. Now, the, uh, the, the solvency debate. I'm starting with the conceded Vernari evidence. It was in the overview. It says that every solvency deficit links to them because the states implement the act. If there are massive funding cuts, then they can't pay for their affirmative. If there is backlash, they can't stop it. And there is no durable fiat of those things because the plan can only fiat the federal government as per TUSFG. Follow on. I'm going for that too. Our meta evidence says empirically works with the ESCA and the NCLB. Uh, after Bush works with the governors, there are any awards. It's key to experience, lobbying, pressure frameworks creating legitimacy and piggybacking off other policies. Our golden evidence also says that in follow-on is ensured because once state starts, there's familiarity that agencies become experts and that they see the political waters and see that it's okay. They say politics links disprove it. You have conceded that it is a loser's lose link, not a popularity link. It's about Trump fighting the plan, not otherwise. They say Trump will not allow it. You've conceded it's done by the Department of Education, DeVos, the courts, and Congress, which Trump is not a part of. They say uh, that specificity matters. Our evidence is good enough in specific to education. I did the warranty analysis well. Now, the rest of the solvency debate, equity, we solve it with changing the Constitution, these suits still exist. You've conceded the green card, which says those suits are better if they are with the state government instead of the federal government because it avoids minimalist pressures. We also saw funding, basic demand for security, that's irrelevant because it links to all of them too, and we solve it because of the constitutional right forcing them to change things. They've also conceded the progressive tax, which is able to solve. Their only possible answer to that is that it takes money away from rich schools. That doesn't matter because Nutrier has plenty of money to fund the rest of the CPS. The spending to add concessions were not about taking out the case of a saying that debt exists now and the economy is resilient, so even if we spend a bunch of money, there's no impact to it. They say Supreme Court precedent is key. I've already answered why Rodriguez on a state level is better than on a federal level. They say that uh, the taxes are bad and cause discrimination. You've conceded that we get away from property tax, which is that good. Their only deficit is interstate, but you've conceded the Vergari evidence, which says patchworks are good because they cause follow-on. Uh, international law solvency deficit. Our Glennon evidence says we solve signal. You've conceded if states are pessimistic about us, then it doesn't matter because they still are moving in the right direction because they hold them to a high bar. I'm not doing anything on inequality because I feel good about that. I'm a little worried about Iowa, but I'm not too concerned because you've conceded domestic alt causes. Their only answer is we missed the peacetime, wartime distinction. Not true. We said death penalty over incarceration and things like the Flint water crisis, which are obviously bigger than rights education when you assume the counterpoint. 